you can repeat, now I am attracted. Now I am attracted. To those instructions. To those instructions. Imparted to me. Imparted to me. By the personality of Godhead. By the personality of Godhead. Govinda. Govinda. Because they are impregnated. Because they are impregnated with instructions. With instructions for relieving the burning heart. Relieving the burning heart. In all circumstances. Also, perfect and Time and space. And time and space. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Herein, Arjuna refers to the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, which was imparted to him by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The Lord left behind him the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, not for the benefit of Arjuna alone, but also for all time and in all lands. The Bhagavad Gita being spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the essence of all Vedic wisdom. It is nicely presented by the Lord Himself for all who have very little time to go through the vast Vedic literature like the Upanishads, Puranas, and Vedanta Sutra. It is put within the study of the great historical epic Mahabharata, which was especially prepared for the less intelligent class, namely the women, the laborers, and those who are worthless descendants of the Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and higher sections of the Vaishyas. The problem which arose in the heart of Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra was solved by the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. Again, after the departure of the Lord from the vision of earthly people, when Arjuna was face to face, with being vanquished in his acquired power and prominence, he wanted again to remember the great teaching of the Bhagavad Gita, just to teach all concerned that the Bhagavad Gita can be consulted in all critical times, not only for solace from all kinds of mental agonies, but also for the way out of great which may embarrass one in some critical hour. The merciful Lord left behind him the great teaching of the Bhagavad Gita so that one can take the instruction of the Lord even when he is not visible in his material eyesight. Material senses cannot have any estimation of the Supreme Lord, but by his inconceivable power, the Lord can incarnate Himself to the sense perception of the conditioned souls in a suitable manner through the agency of matter, which is also another form of the Lord's manifesting energy. Thus the Bhagavad Gita, or any authentic scriptural sound representation of the Lord, is also the incarnation of the Lord. There is no difference between the sound representation of the Lord and the Lord Himself. One can derive the same benefit from the Bhagavad Gita as Arjuna did in the personal presence of the Lord. This is a long purport, so we won't read all of it. I'll just start to read it. We can finish it some other time. Oma Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Nilitan Yena Tasman Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manodistam Sapitam Yena Kutale Swayam Rupa Katam Mariam Tadaki Swam 
So Lord Krishna left this world to go back to Goloka, but in his absence, the son, Srimad Bhagavatam, had come as becoming Krishna. So Persians who have lost their vision due to the darkness of the age, this age of Kali Yuga, people were very irreligious and sinful, fallen, have many bad habits. So people who are, they, they don't have proper vision, they don't see what is the real purpose of life, but they will get light. Just like in the dark, you cannot see. At night you come here in the dark, <laughs> you cannot see anything. But if you put on the light, then you can see clearly. So in the light, you can see everything clearly. So in the, the thing, Bhagavatam is like the light. It gives us the light of spiritual knowledge. It opens our eyes. So Sutta Goswami described that uh, we should take shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. And similarly, Arjuna, he was also in the bewildered condition because he had been with Krishna and he'd been very attached to being with Krishna. He was very much affectionate. They were very good friends. They were always together. And of course, Lord Krishna had given so much help to Arjuna during the battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna had saved Arjuna's life. Even one time, Grandfather Bhishma was coming to kill Arjuna. And Lord Krishna had promised that he would not fight. But Krishna broke his promise. And he picked up the chariot wheel and he ran towards Bhishma. And then Bhishma stopped. He didn't kill Arjuna. <coughs> so that was only one. But there were many other occasions where Krishna saved Arjuna. And so Arjuna deeply attached to Krishna. But then Krishna leaves the world. He disappeared. He left the planet. And so, what should Arjuna do? He's feeling very much pain, separation. Sometimes you see in the material world, you know, in the family, people have so much affection for each other. And sometimes, you know, that you have a husband and wife, they're very attached to each other, they spend all their time together, and then one of them dies, and then the other one's left on their own, and they feel, they, you know, they don't want, they don't want that body. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was this one man, a very old man, and he had his old wife, and the old wife died. And when she died, he said, I want to take her in the car, I want to go and drive with her, and I'll take her to all the places where we used to go. We used to go and drive and see the beach and see the sea and see the mountains. I, went, I just want to take my wife with me. Although she was dead, he wanted to take the dead body, have the dead body sit in the car and go with her. So, like that, people very attached sometimes to the body the material body. So Arjuna, he had lost Lord Krishna. But Arjuna, he understood that Krishna had a spiritual body and Krishna had gone back to Godhead. So Arjuna is thinking that I will have to associate with Krishna by his teaching. The best way to be with Krishna is through his teachings and remembering all the things he told me. So Srila Prabhupada is explaining that actually our Krishna's teachings to Arjuna were given in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is part 
of the Mahabharata. Now people like to read Mahabharata, but you should understand that Mahabharata is not going to get you Krishna Prem. <laughs> if you read the Mahabharata, you may, you know, people also like to watch the movie, watch, they have this, they, even here in Thailand, they have the serial on television, Mahabharata, right? Many people watch it, they enjoy Mahabharata. But you don't get Krishna praying from Mahabharata. Jiva Goswami said that very clearly, that nobody ever got the goal of life just by reading Mahabharata. But the important part of the Mahabharata is the Bhagavad Gita. It's the Bhagavad Gita. The Mahabharata is many, many thousands of verses. It's very, very big. Very big book. Bhagavad Gita is only 700 slogans. So Bhagavad Gita is only one small part of the Mahabharata. But the Bhagavad Gita is the most valuable part of the Mahabharata. It's the, Mahabharata, it's the Bhagavad Gita which gives us the real knowledge of Bhakti Yoga and the Supreme Position of Bhakti Yoga. Krishna explains the knowledge in a very systematic manner. In the first six chapters, he's establishing how Bhakti Yoga is at the top of the yoga ladder. And he explains there's a ladder, there's connections between all the yoga systems. On the bottom of the yoga ladder, not even on the yoga ladder, you have karma kanda activities. Karma kanda activities means to do things to get material benefit. Just like people like to give charity, to get material benefit. People sometimes feed the cows. They want benefit. They go to the Ganga. They want to get rid of their sins. They want to enjoy material life. So, that's a karma kanda activity. Now, karma kanda activities are in the Vedas, but it's material activity, not spiritual activity. Just like in Malaysia, there are many temples, Hindu temples. And the Hindu temples, what do they do? They break the coconut, and they go to the Brahmana priest, and the Brahmana priest will chant some mantras. It's some ritual. There is no real bhakti there. They will make some offering to the devas, many different devas. They will worship. So often, that kind of religion, this is all cheating religion. Kaitava dharma. Now just last night, last night we had a program in Patong at 11 o'clock in the night. And we were there till 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we had about 40 people there for the program. So one person asked the question about faith. And he was asking, is it possible to change our faith? <laughs> So, what do you mean by faith? If, you know, if you think, my faith is Hindu, is it possible to change from being a Hindu to be something else? Of course, many people do, right? 
somebody is a Hindu, they have to marry a Christian, the one that man, he should also become Christian. Mm. The one of our devotees, she's a married woman and she has some daughters. So her daughter, one of the daughters was associating with some Christian boys. So father told the girl, said, if you marry a Christian boy, I will not come to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> if you have daughters, you know, and then they have to get married and they go to marry some Christian boy. So, can faith, can faith change? Yes, well, of course, it, people do change, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's a Christian marries the Muslim, they have to become a Muslim. Even in Christianity, you may be Christian, but you have Catholic and you have Protestant. So if you will marry the Catholic girl, you have to become Catholic. You have to come to that church or go to that religion. So that faith changes. But that kind of faith, that is not real faith. That is not real religion. What is real religion? What is real, the, the real faith? You know, of course we describe Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga begins with faith. Adao Shraddha, Shraddha, faith. So somebody has, somebody has faith, you know, they're by birth, they're born, just like you're born in China. So somebody's born in China, they have faith in Communist Party, Gong Changka. <laughs> right? Their faith is in the party. And other people, they're born, they're born a Hindu. Some say, I'm born a Christian, right? I'm not born a Hindu, I'm born a Christian family. But does that mean faith is different? Faith means belief. So what do we believe? We, we have to understand, first of all, who I am. Before we can understand who is God, first you have to understand who I am, who, who am I? That's the first thing people have to learn. So we have to teach people, I am not the body. But people are thinking, everyone's thinking, I am the body. And if you tell somebody, you're not Hindu. Zion. <laughs> you know, they, they don't like it, you know. It's they, they, difficult for them to understand. Who am I? Because we are thinking, I'm the body, I'm born in this, and this, this is my thing. But that is just due to karma, some karma causes yeah. us to take birth in a particular place, in a particular family, particular time, by karma, the laws of nature. But what is real faith, real faith, real religion, is to understand our spiritual nature, to understand first, I am not the body. And that's what Krishna teaches, first of all, in the Bhagavad Gita. Because Krishna is teaching Bhagavad Gita, the song of God. So God is teaching us to understand, first of all, who am I? And He is teaching, Dehinasmanyata Dehe. Yes, for the embodied soul passes in this life from boyhood to youth to old age. The body changes, right? 
before we had the child's body, we had the baby's body. The body grows, the body changes, but we are the same. So first thing is to understand we're not the body, we're the soul in the body. And the soul, na jayate priyate vakadachin. For the soul, there's no birth, there's no death. He, he's not killed when the body is killed. So we have to understand our nature, our spiritual nature. And then Krishna goes on to teach about yoga. After teaching that we're not the body, then Krishna is teaching how to do yoga. First, karma yoga. Karma yoga is very important for people. Before you can do bhakti yoga, you have to do karma yoga first. You have to do service and you have to give the result to Krishna. Right? That is karma yoga. Working and giving the results to Krishna. And this, this purifies us. And it qualifies us to do bhakti yoga. Someone was asking this morning, because I had to give class to China this morning, so someone was asking me, they said, I have no taste to chant Hare Krishna. And she, she said, I, I'm very attracted to Maya. <laughs> and have no taste to chant Hare Krishna. So what should I do? So I told the devotee, you have to do more service. You have to do more seva. And the more you do service for Krishna, then you will get purified and you will be able to develop a taste for chanting Hare Krishna. Also, we say that just like the person has jaundice. You know jaundice? Yes. Tangyobi. So a person has that disease, if you have that disease, then how to cure it? You know, I remember when I first came to India, I came to India, 1975. I was in Delhi and we had a very small temple, very small, just a rented house. Now they have 14 temples in Delhi. Big temples, huge temples. So anyway, 1975, they just had one small house. It was very hot in Delhi in the summer. Maybe 50 degrees, you know, very hot. Oh, so hot. So I, I come from England, England very cold, you know. <laughs> We came to India, very cool. <laughs> so I got sick, I got jaundice, and I went to doctor, he said, what? He said, no, oh, just you have to rest. <laughs> so I, I was resting, then my devotee told me, he said, you drink sugar cane. You drink the sugar cane juice. He said, it will help to cure the jaundice. So I like sugar cane juice. <laughs> Oh, very nice, you know, yeah, let me drink sugar cane. So they brought me a big bottle of sugar cane juice, and I drank it, wow, horrible. I thought, what's wrong with the sugar cane juice? He said, nothing wrong with the sugar cane juice. Problem is your liver, because you're sick, because you have jaundice. You cannot taste the sweetness of the sugar cane. So what to do? 
You have to keep drinking. Ooh. But that's the cure. You have to drink the sugar cane. So gradually, gradually becomes a little sweeter and then a little sweeter and then gradually one day you can taste the real taste of the sugar cane. So the holy name of Krishna is like that. We don't taste the sweetness in the beginning. We're not eager to chant. We have no attraction. But if we keep chanting, one day the taste will come. We will taste the name. And the same is true reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Many people tell me, oh, I read the Srimad Bhagavatam. But I get tired reading Srimad Bhagavatam. What to do? You have to keep reading. And stay awake. <laughs> Don't sleep. Right? That's important. Read. Try to read carefully. Try to hear carefully. So gradually, one day, you're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna on the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to come to that level. It takes time, it takes practice. We have to hear and chant regularly. In the beginning, we don't like to do it, but gradually it becomes pleasure. Prabhupada gives an example, just like the child, when the child is very young, cannot walk, and walking will fall. Go we'll fall and cry and get hurt. So mother may say, okay, I don't want my child to walk because you always fall down and get hurt. So let my child just sit. But that's not natural. No, a child has to practice walking and gradually one day the child will walk nicely without any problem. It takes practice, right? You have to practice. When we are children, young baby, we have to practice walking. The same way we have to practice bhakti yoga. The practice is important. Controlling the mind. Arjuna was told how to do yoga in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna was telling Arjuna how to practice control, fix the mind. And Arjuna said, Oh, Chanchalahi Mana Krishna. I cannot control, my mind is Chanchal, very restless. It will not stay in one place. What to do? Lord Krishna said, I know it's difficult, but it's possible by practice and detachment. Abhyasena tukonteyat vairagyena Abhyas, practice, very important. Just like writing Chinese characters, you have to write a Chinese character, there's so many strokes, you know. You have to write one character, you have to write it many times before you learn to write the character. You know, you have, just like we would write A, B, C, you have to write many times. So Chinese character also, write the Chinese, you have to practice it, write it many times. So practice, the same way, control the mind, by practice you can do it. We have to practice regularly means every day you have to do that. Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he used to say, in the morning you take shoes and beat the mind. Because when we get up in the morning you think, oh I'm tired, oh I don't want to chant, oh I'm hungry, Oh, I want to sleep more. I have to take a shoe, beat the mind. And then at night, 
At night, when it comes time, in the evening, you want to sleep, or you want to watch television, you want to watch some movie, you want to eat, these things, you all want to do all these things, you have to take a broom and beat the mind again. Beat the mind. Don't give in to the mind. This is where we control the mind. So it, it takes that kind of practice, abhyas, that kind of discipline. We're training our mind. One devotee, he used to talk about training the mind. He said, we're training our soldiers. All of the devotees are like the soldiers in the army of Lord Chaitanya. And we're training to fight Maya. So the soldiers, in the time of the, the Romans, they would fight lions. They would put the soldier, they would put the man in the field, they give him a sword, and there would be these lions, and you fight the lions. So in the same way, we are fighting our mind with japa, by doing our japa every day, by chanting the holy name. This way we can control the mind. So this japa is one way to control the mind. Other way, here the Srimad Bhagavatam, here Bhagavad Gita, here Krishna's teachings. Bhagavad Gita is meant for less educated people. Like we're, most of us, we are not so much Brahminical, we don't know much Sanskrit. We don't know the, all the Sanskrit grammar, so difficult to know the meaning. So Bhagavad Gita is the basic knowledge. But it begins at the basic knowledge and it ends at the highest knowledge. The highest knowledge is surrender to Krishna. And Krishna gives in the ninth chapter the most confidential knowledge. Manmana Baba Matpakyo Matrajiva Namaskuru Lokana Swami was here. He was speaking on this verse. This is actually from Haiti. This verse comes twice. Ninth chapter, eighteenth chapter. Krishna saying the same thing. Four things we have to do, right? Engage your mind, thinking of me. Become my devotee. Worship me, and offer obeisances to me. So the mind, we use the mind is subtle. And then worshipping Krishna, we use our hands to worship Krishna, to offer, to cook food for Krishna, and to offer different artis to Krishna, worshipping Krishna. Become a devotee. Become devotee means we put on the tilak, we put on the neck beads, and we have a big bag, and chant the holy name, that's most important chanting the holy name and then offering obeisances also. Use the body to bow down before Krishna. So four activities, not very difficult. We can do these things. This way you become very dear to Lord Krishna. So Krishna, we want to become dear to Krishna. We just have to practice doing these things regularly. It shouldn't be just once a week. Once a week I chant Hare Krishna. We were, someone was saying, one man promised to be vegetarian one day a week. <laughs> you get people like that, you know. Just to please you, I'll be a vegetarian one day a week. So, that, you know, that's not very pleasing to Krishna. Krishna wants to see Ananya Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti means unbroken, without deviation. 
the very fixed devotion, right? Constantly engaged in Krishna's service. And that service to Krishna should be ahaitiki and apratihata. Ahaitiki means favorable and uninterrupted. Favorable. The mood in which we serve Krishna is very important. The mood that uh, offering to Krishna that with love, just like when we chant the holy name, the mood is important to chant with love. Many people may say your name. Some people may say your name with disgust. They may say it in a bad way, and you know, they may not say your name very nicely. Just like if you have to go to the policeman, and the policeman, you know, stops you driving the car, they, where's your license, you know, are, are you, are you, you know, that they say your name, are you Patong Pablo? Patong Pablo. Yes. And they say the name, they don't say the name with love. So when we chant Krishna's name, we have to chant with love. In the same way, when we read Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to read with love, devotion. We have to develop that feeling for Lord Krishna. Okay, any question? Any comment? Yes? Yes, well, how to be steady in Krishna consciousness anywhere? You need association. Association is very important. You have to associate, try to associate with devotees. So, nowadays, of course, people do associate through the internet. You have a mobile phone, you have 4G, whatever, you know. So you can get association, you, you have to try to have a regular spiritual program. Regularly, every day, rising early, chanting, 
reading the scriptures, worshipping Krishna, whatever you cook, you offer it to Krishna, and you're distributing, you like to distribute food, you can give food, you give food to the old people, well that, that's your, your choice. Where you want to preach, you want to be there in that village, you can try there. People live a long time, that's not very important, how long people live. Lord Chaitanya was in this world for only 48 years. And Shankaracharya was here only for 32 years. But they did wonderful things. They did very big things. A tree can stand for thousands of years. But what is the value of the tree? So people live a long time doesn't mean anything. They're not free of death. Still they're going to die one day. In Srimad Bhagavatam it tells about there was this one Markandeya Rishi and he got a benediction that he could live through the night of Brahma. So you know in the life of Brahma there's a day and one day of Brahma we say Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Yet Brahma do. The one day of Brahma is a thousand ages taken together. One day of Brahma is a thousand ages. So one day of Brahma is millions and millions of years. And Mark in the night is the same duration. So Mark in the Arishi got the benediction. He could live through the night of Brahma. But when the night of Brahma comes, there's partial annihilation and the whole bottom of the universe is flooded. All the lower planets are flooded. So Markandeya Rishi was in that ocean, the ocean of devastation. And he was just floating around there in the ocean, he was suffering. He was thinking, oh, I could live the night of Brahma, it's just so much suffering. Had to suffer. There were so many living entities in that ocean, horrible creatures, all wanted to swallow him and eat him. And he suffered and there was no food, he couldn't get anything to eat or anything. So Martin Neri, she suffered so much because he got the benediction of the long run. Hmm. So what's important is consciousness. You, we want to so we want to keep our own Krishna consciousness and we have to keep ourselves Krishna conscious by regularly hearing and chanting and doing service. So cooking for Krishna, distributing Krishna's books and you like to distribute prasadam, okay that's also nice service. So that's how you become, that's how you keep yourself Krishna conscious. Just like we do in the temple, we have a program. So you're staying, you're not staying in the temple, but you do the same program. Just like we do, you wake up in the morning, you can offer arti, worship tosi, chant shikshastikam, chant the ten offenses, and then also chant your japa. And then after chanting japa, then read the ba read the Bhagavatam, read the book. Or here, on the go online and hear a class from someone. Right? This if you keep yourself doing like this every day, then your life will become Krishna conscious. You'll be in good consciousness. But if you go home and associate with your mother, and she's eating meat, and you have to smell the meat. It's not very good. 
and go home and the mother saying, have a piece of meat. You're very healthy. Then you're stupid. Go back to all that. Have to be careful about association. Yes. Any other question? I you waiting on? Yes. Very difficult. <laughs> Just try to become a devotee yourself. Just try to chant the holy name yourself. If you can chant the holy name, then they will benefit. You can do your chanting for their benefit. But to try to make people, <laughs> that old people, to bring them to Krishna consciousness, impossible. Mm -hmm. 
very, very rare. Of course, Krishna Kumari, she brought her mother. Krishna Kumari, the lady from Shinyang, she brought her mother, who initiated her, Smita Krishna. That's very rare. Mm-hmm. But because the, the, her husband had gone, husband in the party, the mother was a Buddhist, so already vegetarian, and she could be with the daughter, and she associated every with the, living with the daughter, so she got a lot of association. So she became the Buddha. Prabhupada used to talk about it, how uh, the one devotee went to his parents and he told his parents, the mother was dying, he was telling his mother, Mother, chant Hare Krishna, chant Hare Krishna. And the mother said, Oh, I cannot say so many things. <laughs> mother could say, I cannot say so many things, but she could not say Hare Krishna. <laughs> So the holy name does not manifest on the tongue of people who are very deeply attached to material life. So you would you can spend all, so much time, waste your time trying to preach to your parents. It's the most difficult thing. You know, look at Prahlad. Look what Prahlad went through. His father tried to kill him. So you, you, you waste, you look, you waste so much of your own time trying to make them devotee. Just try and be a devotee yourself. Concentrate on your own chanting. Sometimes people want to go back to Godhead. I want to take my family with me. <laughs> That's material attachment. We have we have a spiritual family. Sometimes we want to take the dog with them back to Godhead. <laughs> But we're trying to get free of all this attachment. So chanting, chanting is to help us let go of all this attachment. Just like the one king, he had a son, and then the son died. And then the king was, was lamenting, Oh, my son, my son, I lost my son. And then he brought the son back to life. And the son spoke to the father and said, Who are you? The son said to the father, Who are you? He said, I'm your father. So he said, I have so many fathers. So many fathers, so many mothers. So this is our foolishness, you know, we, we're, we're so much in the bodily conception of life, we're so attached to this person and that person. The person who we're really attached to, who we really love, is Krishna, but we've forgotten him. So we're trying to remember that. This is why we cultivate Krishna consciousness. Become attached to Krishna. Be with Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shrimad Bhagavatam, Jai.